Welcome to this video. Here we will just help you to getting started uh, with Pamir. So a very basic example. Let me show you how and what to do. So first of all, once Pamir is open, I'm going to click on this button here. This will start a new project and you can call it anything. So let's call it Intro. And then you can select your region. The software will default to the South African system for now. I've created my own, you can see that. And you can do that as well. Uh, but that's for later video. Once you've done that, you click OK. And from here will open with the layout window displayed. And it will also automatically open your project overview. So here you can choose what project type you want. Non-attic or attic, you can choose your roof loading here. It sets up the truss spacings from here. You can choose your walls from here. Let me just quickly show you how to change that. If you want to change the default, so wall description. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the cavity. So I click on that. And then I can delete that layer. Click that one, delete the layer. And I make the that layer, I'm going to make a 230 wall. I'm going to change the plate size or width to 114 and then you need a plate offset if you say for instance you want a 50 millimeter bearing offset like in 2020 uh, what you need to do is you have to take the 50 mils subtract it from 230 subtract your plate width and the answer that you're left with will be your plate offset because it works from the inside of the Wall. So here, after I've calculated it, it comes to 66, which will give you then the 50 mil offset that you get there that you want to use. Also that you need to notice is that the inside is on the left hand side and the outside is on the right hand side of this wall template in Pamir. Okay, once you're happy with that, I'm just going to change the outer wall. You can see you've got inner wall, firewalls and chimneys. You can go through that on your own. So I'm going to click OK. And then you can also choose where your reference line is. The red line indicates that. So that's outside and you can choose any line that you want. We're going to leave it on the outside, which is the default. Then your heel type. I'm going to choose the small stub. And you can give it a small cantilever if you need to or not. So for this example, I'm going to change that to zero. Then you can set up your roof surface. From here calls it surface 2020 calls it planes so yeah it's a surface roof surface your height reference will be of your z value so we're going to make it zero um, the roof pitch here's an offset as well which i'm going to change to zero as well otherwise you get a cantilever and this you can use then to create cantilevers from the word go your overhang including your bearing offset as we know it and then your perpendicular height with that you want to match for instance here we're going to match one for nine you can switch off perpendicular and give it an exact vertical height but it complicates it a bit more unless you want to do a stub truss or something like that okay, so let's scroll down here then you can choose your overhang type let's go square but you see you've got a lot of options here and then you can what's nice in Premiere you can do a second cut as well but so now we're going to just do none and then basically once you've set that up I'm going to go through design code and all that and then I'm going to click OK and now you can start inputting so again the principles will stay the same you want to do your walls first then your planes or your surfaces and then your framing even though you can do it all at once with the automation that Premiere gives you but I'm going to do it step by step you can play with it uh, afterwards okay so first of all you've got your input method here so I'm going to choose a building line and you can see you've got building arc you've got circles you've got a rectangular you've got an L-shape dog legs and you've got even got a building that is T-shaped I'm just going to you can play with that on your own time I'm going to show you the building line and how it works uh, so I'm going to choose building line and you can see there for now I'm just going to input wall but you can switch on roof and then you can also switch on frame which will then automatically do roof surfaces and frame your trusses for you. I'm just going to switch that off to show you 
walls only once you're on one item only you can now set on the right hand side you can see there's the properties and for this example I'm going to make it a 2.7 meter high wall and my bottom height which is negative at the moment I'm going to make a zero yeah I just have to keep that in mind okay and then once you've set all those things up you've got all the other settings here you can choose how to split frames on a wall if you need to split it when you've got an internal wall or something like that yeah we just leave it as none and you can switch it on as a supporting or non-supporting wall with that tick okay from here also you need to basically go anti-clockwise that's just how it's been set up and you just have to get used to creating walls going anti-clockwise I'm going to choose the tool again, building line, and I've chosen wall there from the sub menus, and then I'm going to click on the origin, and I start drawing my wall to the side. Just going to do L shape here. So basically, let's make that eight meters. So you can pull this at any angle. I'm just make sure it's at zero for now, and then you can also then start typing in a distance here, okay? Or you can drag a distance whichever way you like. The more you zoom in, the more accurate you can get. Let's say make it 15 meters, our famous 15 meter buildings, and enter. And then I change my direction going upwards. Let's make that 9 meters. So I type in 9,000. Then I'm going to go to left. Let's go past here. So let's create a, a, a bit of a angled building. So I'm going to let's make that 20 meters create a bit of an L shape building here I'm going to type in 20,000 I'm going to go down let's make that 17 enter if you want to get back to the origin point what's quite nice let me show you you can zoom in and then hover on that point and when you press shift or control shift it gives you either the shorter or the longest distance and here you can see I want to press Control Shift. So I click, and then let go, and I click again, and that closes the building. And zoom out. You can also double click your mouse wheel to get a best fit zoom, and that's it. Alt One to get back to your layout view, and what you can do on the side here is quite nice. So you can select on the left hand side here. You select all your framing. You can see it selects all of it, and then you just press the Delete key on your keyboard and your surfaces as well you select them and you press the delete key so let's just make sure on the walls I'm going to click on one wall and see that the height reference is 2.7 meters so let's just go back to the tools here at the top so rectangular I want to do roof only and my height reference here is 2700 and you can see then that you can also set the perpendicular height for your height reference which is what your match height is you just have to remember to do that as well so we're going to leave it at 149 and you can set the pitch here as well again so I'm going to click then I'm going to click in here oops just escape I want to go to the diagonal corners so on the wall plate corner again and on the opposite side the opposite corner click and you can see it forms that part and then here from the bottom left corner up to the corner there click and you can see it merges the uh, roof for you alt 3 go to your 3d view just to confirm <laughs> that you're on the correct height this time it's a good idea to do this right at the beginning okay and alt 1 to get back to layout the top down view what we used to in 2020 as layout okay and again yeah, the tools at the top here, auto frame, which will set up most of the framing for you and get it right for you. Let's have a look at that. I'm going to quickly do that, trim, and then choose the overhang here to trim it again. So I'm not going to change the settings inside the heap systems, but that you can do. Let's check this run out. So if I look at this, you can click on roof run here, which chooses that framing area. And from the right hand side again you can see it's at fixed spacing at the moment but if you can set it to equal spacing which is called maximum spacing so it will maximize the spacing for you and you can set it up and you can see it changes it there and we can do the same with this one so you click on roof run 
and change it from fixed spacing to maximum spacing. And that's what you can do with Palmia. Uh, there's a lot more things that you can play around with. You'll see that you can create your own trusses from there with this tool here and then select what it what type of truss you want from this drop down here. Okay. You've also got your manual framing zones that you can choose from here. And then you can choose manual framing zones also again from the drop down. So you can see you've got all that so you can play around with all those. These will mostly get customized for South Africa in the long run. Uh, but yeah, that should get you going on Palmier for now. Thanks.